Usually I watch your performances from the studio because we're back in there almost getting ready to do the post game. That's when you're coming in the game. Um, and it's like the same story every time. Here comes Mason, throws some gas, a couple strikeouts usually mixed in. Like your, your outings are almost like predictable. Why can't hitters time you? Uh, I think it's, probably, <laughs> it's one a weird of, question. probably one of the hardest things to do is hit a 100-mile-an-hour hit a fastball. I mean, 103, they have, I think. They have all that stuff that's broken down of right. like how quick you have to react. I think just you know the offerings that I have, obviously the fastball and you know throwing the slider the way I've been able to throw it this year too, I think yeah. it's just really hard for a hitter to, to be comfortable up there. You know, It's not something that you know, I'm sure they game plan to face the closer, but it's not the same as, you know, game planning to face the starter. Well, they, they know it's a possibility that when the A's have the lead and it's the ninth inning that you might be in there. I guess if they knew fastball was coming and they could sit on that if they didn't know if it might be your slider or any other pitches you might throw. Um, like these are major league hitters. It, it baffles me that I know it's fast, but if they can hit 97, why can't they hit 103? Yeah, I I don't, you don't know. know. I'll take it. I'll take it. You <laughs> yeah, know. exactly. I, I, I won't search for an answer if I don't have to. <laughs> um, you ever look up at the radar gun, or do you just know when it comes out of your hand how it feels? From time to time, yeah. I mean, yeah. some places they got the velo right behind yeah, home yeah. plate, so it's yeah. like you can't miss it. Um, you know, but yeah, I think it's a, a good way to measure yourself. You know, if you know you're kind of leaning on your fastball more if it's coming out, or you know, leaning on your breaking ball if you're getting good swings on it. Um, but yeah, it's, it's kind of just a game of adjustments. You know, you can't get too caught up in, you know, the number that's popping up on the board. You yeah. Worry yeah. about, you know, kind of what you're doing with the good. guy in the box. It's a good point. So tell me if I'm wrong here, but last year, it seems like you were able to pull 101 out of your pocket pretty easy. Are you throwing harder knowing that your workload is less as a reliever or a closer? It's not really a conscious conscious thing you know I think it's just the like you said the workload mm -hmm. and you know the shorter outings that just kind of let it play up you know it could also be the the moment too yeah. you know yeah. the moment in the ninth inning with right. the one run leads a lot a lot bigger I mean every out's important then but you know the fourth inning you know getting yeah. the third out yeah you know it's just a little bit different of a feel a little different atmosphere around that moment a lot of pitchers in this day and age are going through arm elbow injuries and people have tied a lot of things to you know, what pitchers are going through, kind of an epidemic, whether it's gripping the ball too tight, spinning the ball too tight, maybe velocity even. What things do you do? And I say this knock on every piece of wood around here. What things do you do to make sure that your arm is healthy as fast as you throw so regularly? Yeah, it's just staying consistent. You know, I mean, this is my body's normal. Yeah. Um, you know, throwing a baseball in general is not healthy. Yeah. You see the pictures of guys' arms, no yeah. matter how hard they throw, and it's not not a movement that you look at and you're like, yeah, that looks, that looks good. That looks good. Yeah, you know, you like, yeah. that looks like it hurts. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's just, you know, kind of training your body to, to be able to bounce back. Um, you know, we have regular maintenance stuff that we yeah. do, shoulder, arm, um, conditioning, strength stuff in the weight room. So really it's a number of things. It's just finding a routine that works for you. You mentioned the slider. That's such an important pitch for you because yeah, somebody's throwing 103 and that's all you had maybe it would be less effective the slider what your 1a is that what that is for you i like to think so At yeah 87 I, or so I'd say i have equal confidence in my yeah. fastball and the slider i know that they both make each other better so yeah. you know it's it's silly to sit there and try and ram one down a guy's throat yeah. where you can kind of mix and match a little bit and keep them off balance so it's the, it's the two things it's the deception of they don't know what's coming until it's literally coming their direction but also the difference in velocity at what, 15, 16 miles an hour. How do you time that? Yeah, you can't. I mean, it's almost like you have to pick one. Yeah. You know, and that's part of the game within the game is just, you know, what's this guy thinking? What's he looking for? Yeah. What are his strengths? Um, and, you know, just kind of rolling out in that moment what's, what's feeling the best for you. I mentioned the strikeouts earlier and how predictable some of your outings are. I mean, literally, if it's one inning, you're probably getting two Ks. Are strikeouts just the product of, of what you're throwing? Are you, are you trying to strike guys out? Or is that just the swing and miss part about it? I think it's just swing and miss. You, know, yeah. you want to avoid a guy's damage zone. You want to avoid putting the ball in a place where he's going to be able to handle it. Yeah. So, um, you know, in those leverage situations, you don't want to take a chance. You don't want to give a guy an opportunity to hit one over the wall and, you know, tie the game. A couple road trips ago, A's are at Yankee Stadium. You get a couple save opportunities. And not only do you come out there for the bottom of the ninth, ninth um, but you're facing like the heart of their order in both times. Is that so far? Has that been 
one of the pinnacles of this season and, and having that success against that team at that ballpark? Yeah, for sure. I mean, we we pride ourselves on being ready for moments like that. Yeah. You know, Yankee Stadium just has a different, you know, feel than a lot of places. Some of it's the fans, but a lot of it's, you know, the guys on the other side, just kind of the, the aura that surrounds that team. So, yeah, to be able to go in there for us, you know, win two out of four games on the road, yeah. you know, I think – Almost any team up and down the league that goes in the Yankee Stadium and splits right now with the way they're playing, I think they'd be happy. So yeah, we were we were really stoked for it, and you know, obviously for me to have that moment was yeah. was really cool. Sometimes we have the debate in studio when Cots puts you out there in an eighth inning or even a ninth into extra innings into a tenth, and we're like, wait, <laughs> most closers only pitch one inning or three outs in Major League Baseball. You've proven this year. I think nine or ten times you've been out there for more than three outs. I know you'll do whatever they ask. I know you'll do whatever it takes for the team to win. Are you just built for that? Is that why they see you in that role? I think so. I think just my background, as opposed to guys that have been doing that for years and years, yeah. um, just being able to go multiple innings is kind of valuable valuable to us. And, you know, I've always been ready to go back out for another inning. You know, yeah. sometimes there's you get three outs, and it's like, man, I feel good. My stuff looks great. Like, get me back out there. And it's like, is ah. there a, Is there a quick... Chat, wink, nod, cots, or emo, like, yeah. yeah well, usually I just try to avoid them if I want to stay in the game. But <laughs> Don't cots, let them find you. Cots will come find me and you know, tell me, give you a handshake, tell you you're done, good job, etc. Maybe the last season ever of A's baseball here. Um, what do you think about pitching in the Coliseum? I like it. You know, I think there's a lot of stuff that surrounds it, but, you know, especially this year. Even with the smaller crowds, you know, yeah. the atmosphere at the end of the game is awesome. Um, and, you know, we know the fans are passionate. So, yeah. you know, regardless of how many how many people are in the seats, we yeah. know that, you know, they're, they're cheering for us, they're pulling for us. So, yeah, I, I enjoy it. And, yeah, we're trying to savor these moments for sure. I know this isn't your part of the country and play for the team that drafted you. Do you understand all the, maybe some of the emotions of what's been happening here, what's about to happen here as this season kind of winds down? Do you at least uh, have a grasp on it? Yeah, I think I think we're able to appreciate it. Um, you know, we know the greatness that has happened here. You know, you can look up in the rafters and see, you know, the great players that have played here. Um, you know, the teams that have, you know, performed and won on the big stage on this field. Yeah. Um, and you know, day to day, you might not realize it every day, but you know, that's part of what makes this place special. Um, is kind of the moments that have happened here, and you know, how long the you know the team has has competed and. And worked here, you know, kind of just in the same dugout, same bullpen, yeah. et cetera. So, you know, as a player, that's that's really cool, especially when you get to meet, you know, players like that. We've decided that if you want to be the next Dennis Eckersley, all you really need to do is change your hair. Like, <laughs> well, a little, uh, little, little longer hair, and yeah. I gotta, work on, gotta work on the facial hair a little bit, you know. So, <laughs> two more quick things for you. What what do you want to do the rest of this season? You got a, you got a nice amount of saves under your belt. I know. There could be an all-star team named even by the time that this show starts airing. Um, do you set personal goals? Do you worry about that stuff? Do you have objectives for you? I think it's important for you to have goals and objectives. Um, you know, you think about longer-term stuff, yeah. and it's like you don't have as much control over that. You have control over today. Um, but, yeah, I think setting goals like that, I think it's every player's goal to be an all-star. Um, but really it's just bringing the same effort, the consistency, uh, and putting together a full season. You know, like, I mean – Guys will have great halves, um, and then kind of fade off as the season goes. Yeah. So it's just just staying staying consistent, staying staying on top of things, and you know trying to stretch this out. Well, to get a first full entire season start to finish this year would be great. Uh, and let's just expand that one last thing: the rest of the career. Are there other goals that you've set out to attain? Is it longevity in this league? Is it maintaining a certain something? Definitely. What's in your mind? Yeah, I mean, every player wants to stay here as long as they can. Um, you know, it's. You play until the game tells you you're done. Yeah. So, you know, you do everything you can to, to make that as long as possible. Um, you know, every player, every competitor wants to win. Uh, and, you know, obviously a World Series is is the, the pinnacle of that. So, yeah, it's a lot of it centers around winning. Well, it's no longer Miller time. Um, maybe for me it's actually Miller time, but for you, you got to go play. <laughs> Mason, I appreciate this. Thank you so much. Thank you, Brody.